It's a positive film. It has heroes and villains, and uh, that it essentially uh, is a fun movie to watch. It's been a long time since people have been able to go to the movies and see a sort of straightforward, wholesome, fun adventure. Well, it's a fantasy. It's not science fiction so much as it is space fantasy. And it's about people. It's about, fin it's finally about people and not finally about science. The story when you actually put it into words is only so much nonsense to hang a great visual experience onto. It's the stuff that fairy tales are made of sort of boiling down religion into a very basic concept. Uh, the fact that there is some deity or some power or some force that sort of controls our destiny uh, works for good and also works for evil. Marvelous, healthy innocence. Great place, wonderful to look at, full of guts, nothing unpleasant. I mean, people go bang, bang, and people fall over and dead. But, you know, no horrors. A sort of wonderful freshness about it, a kind of like a wonderful fresh air. It's got whatever you want it to be. It's a it's pure entertainment. It's like a roller coaster ride, and it can be interpreted as long as you enjoy it, which is the intention. Hello and welcome back to Generation Skywalker and Book Month. Uh, getting on in the month now, so we are we are getting there with this. But this show is all about the collecting side of books, um, especially in recent years. There's so so many collecting books coming out uh, all the time. People with Kickstarter campaigns and whatnot. So there is plenty to delve into here. And uh, joining me to take a look at these are just some of the. Um, generation skywalker team we have got daniel good evening dan good evening we've got craig good evening craig hello and we've got the dulcet tones of jez good evening jez hello everyone you you put those tones on even more then when you said that <laughs> after i said that yeah I did. <laughs> collecting books boys now we are all predominantly brought together because we do collect the toys I, I, I buy quite a lot of these books do we all delve in these do we have have a good collection. What was the last collecting book you all bought? Craig, I reckon yours was probably in 1987. <laughs> it probably wasn't far off. I think I bought, I think the last one I bought was the Ultimate Action Figure Collection, which I wasn't going to buy, uh, but it was in it was in the works cheap. And it's a lovely book. So I bought that. But that's that's going back a few years. So I, I've not up to speed with a lot of the newer, very specific, uh, you know, category specific books, which, you know, I've looked at from a distance and I do admire. But, um, yeah, haven't haven't gone for it's a terrific summer book that I often um, sit in my garden with a, a cheeky cider or a G&T and have a little flick through that book. Quite enjoy it. Uh, what about you, Dan? The last one I got was the Engineering and Empire book that I picked up in Chicago last year. It's less of a collecting book, more of a history of the, the people that worked at Kenner. But, it's, you know, it's lots of nice pictures of prototypes and I suppose the, the evolution of the toy from that through to the final product. It's pretty good. Good read. Good stuff. And what about you, Jez? For me, it was the uh, Star Wars Prototypes book, which I think we're going to be talking about later on. Lovely book. That is. Uh, Gus and Duncan often do a good uh, good book. I've recently, actually, probably in the last month, um, received the volume two of the Made in Spain catalogue, the PBB POC books by Javier Ru Rui Lopez. And again, we're talking about it a bit later on, but um, they are superb books, which I will give them a lot of love in later. Now, let's, let's delve into a, a collecting book then. What makes a good collecting book? Easy. Rep well, first of all, you need to know the authors or the authors, from my point of view, need to, to come with a bit of chatter, come with a bit of credibility uh, and know their stuff. So when you've seen these people say at Star Wars uh, Celebration collecting track or you've just known that they've been out there and they've done the research. So what you're getting is actually factual and accurate. So, um, yeah, for me, there are uh, a few clear winners. We've got uh, Gus and Duncan. They uh, pretty much can turn their hand to some really, really good stuff. But some of them are really, really big. And uh, when it comes to buying these books at conventions and stuff, it's, it's actually getting them back, isn't it, Stu? Sometimes trying to get them in your luggage when you've 
purchased all the other things. You're like, right, yeah, I'm running out of space and weight. But just great pictures from us. It's a collecting point of view. So a combination of, of pictures and a decent glossary as well, because some of the terminology, um, there's, there's a lot to keep up with. So, um, yeah, all in all, really, there's, there's some which I think, yeah, I, I like these. And then I've got some very, very small books as well. So, yeah, I, I don't know, mate. Um, the subject's got to be appealing as well. There's quite a few out there. I'm just thinking, yeah, I'm sure that's great. I, you know, I really, really rate the uh, the publisher or, or the authors, but it's not really in the swim zone. So in the swim lane, so I'm, yeah, that's not necessarily something I'm going to go after. Let's be, and, and let's be honest about it, some of these books. They come out at a high price because they're often self-published or really limited runs. You're sometimes talking 60, 70, 80 quid for some of these books. And then you're talking 20, 30 quid postage if they're not based in the UK. Dan, do you just look for Steve Sansweet's name on the book? Because when we did the uh, interview with him, you were very, very fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I buy everything. Joe's kind of covered everything there, didn't he, when, in terms of why he'd buy a book. But, I mean, if the image, you know, the images is great. You know, if there's good images in there of things you haven't seen before, you know, areas of collecting that you, you're not necessarily familiar with, it's it's a real good way of, you know, getting a, a peek behind the curtain of what's out there. Craig, anything you'd want to add? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to add the obvious thing for me, really, which is design. It's It's not enough for it just to be a list of stuff and some photographs anymore. I think you know, we'll talk about how these things have evolved over the years, but... Like you say, when you're paying that money, it's got to be gorgeous as well. Hit the nail on the head, actually. I'm just, I'm just looking. I find that um, I know when I've got a good book, when I can flick it open and I see something, it makes me want to go and buy it. Now, the Tomart's Guide does that to me all the time. And um, I've, I've actually delved into other areas with, um, with collecting books. I do have Transformers. I've got a G.I. Joe one. I've got some Mask. I've got some He-Man. And a lot of them, I flick them. I'm not being funny, but I've never been into G.I. Joe but I open that book up and then end up scrolling eBay, kind of like, what are you doing, Stuart? We've got some great books on the list. We've all, um, let's, we best just say that. So we are going to be going through, we've all chosen three collecting books to make up our, um, what is it? Not so much a recommendation, maybe. How would we describe what we've chosen? I think for me, they're, they're books that have been important to me at different parts of my collecting journey. Yeah. So they're maybe not things I refer to these days, but when I look back at, you know, when I started collecting, some of these things were indispensable to me. So different types of books. We, we've got the creation of the toys now. We, we didn't see these in too much in the early days, but these days we've got all sorts of books. We've got Kim Simmons, who did the photography, releasing books with his photography back from the days. And I think the current book he's just released has even got him photographing the toys now, which... Yeah, so I've bought, I've I've gone in and crowdfunding that, which you know I know you guys gave it a hard time on the podcast, but I've gone in on that one. And once it was funded, he sent a digital print of all of of, of a new photograph that he's done of Yoda lifting the the X wing out of the swamps of Dagobah. That I'm told on email, I'm not allowed to share with anyone. It's only for people that have funded the book. Well, he's going to have to give it to you for the enhanced version, isn't he, Craig? <laughs> 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 but this so. So this this is probably where I so first of all Dan I just like to say we we gave it a hard time because I know of where I know the I know it's coming from and I know, I know that has been corrected and I don't think we actually corrected that on the show they did eventually turn it down so they they did do the right thing with that book does does him taking a photo now resonate with you though being a vintage collector no it wasn't a deal breaker for me when you look back at the whole of vintage and you know how it was put together and it was in such a short time span that so much happened it's it's kind of a bit of a time capsule and i think every little facet of it everybody's crawling over now but it, it, you know he's not he's not getting any younger right so he, he's it's a it's a great way to document what he did back then and I, I haven't seen the book yet i don't know how how much detail it goes into but from that point of view and being a you know quite a avid empire strikes back collector it was an, a no-brainer for me um you mentioned postage about at the beginning about posting these ship these books across but that was included in the price anywhere in the world so it's like well i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna throw in for it well i know i spoke about the price earlier that that's has come up pretty i bought the first one which rich did a uh, a big job lot over to the uk because of the price of postage mm. but that's that's a pretty expensive project that book isn't it i think it was 75 quid or 125 dollars for the lowest the lowest band yeah see that's you know the You've got to be invested in it to be able to spend that money. Yeah, you? absolutely. But when the because price, when you look at the price of what they've been in the past with a postage, it, it kind of it feels about yeah. right for an international purchase, anyways. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. 
Um, but also along along those lines, we have had um, a new proof by Matthias Rendell, yep. which I believe he's currently got a Kickstarter going because there's been a lot of he he sold out of that book and there's a lot of requests for that book still. Now I don't own that book actually, and it is a book I, I was meant to pick up, but um, I've I've flicked my my way through it and that is beautifully laid out. If you are interested in the pre-production of these these toys. It is a beautiful book. And I know that the Chromelion Strikes Back has been in the offering for quite a while. And I think there is finally a Kickstarter to get that over the line because I think his his project is having to obviously source the proofs and everything and Chromelions and anything that is needed for those and uh, photographing them and trying to get to people to, to get those images must be extremely uh, time consuming. And obviously you mentioned in the beginning, Dan, Engineering and Empire, you've got that book which takes you through the, um, that's different stories from the people who, who were producing these toys weren't they the designers and all that kind of stuff yeah again they're all getting on again a bit so it's you know it's just a little time capsule of what went back on in kenner in the 70s and 80s and it, it doesn't just cover star wars it, it covers you know what was going on at that time so <laughs> play-doh stories and all sorts in there but you know it's horses for courses if you're interested in that sort of thing it's uh it's out there with gary baldridge and matt george and stephen ward who who wrote that book absolutely lovely genuine guys as well and uh, there is a volume two coming on that isn't there so be interesting well, to see that yeah well it's got volume one on the spine so i'd hope so it'll look a bit yeah. bare with just one and then you've got specific topics i've i've included a couple but you've got nationalities um there's a canadian book which i'd love to pick up or uh, the argentinian i picked up at um at the last echo the authors were there quite a nice uh, little flick through um, i'm glad you said the authors were there at the end because um yeah <laughs> you you talked about books and then you just said the argentinian i picked up at the last celebration and um <laughs> You could have just finished that, can you? I always find those books. Now I'm I'm talking about two of them later on, but I always find those books quite fascinating when when you've got a country's offerings broken down. I find them very very helpful for podcasting. Like for example, the French one was done by Stephen Fourcourt and uh, Yann Leroux. The amount of times that we've spoken about something in France, and they are so well laid out that you flick through that and it's in there. You get the information you need straight away. So I find those books really useful. Yeah, but that is a good book. The micro collection book, a book that I've already mentioned, I'm desperate to get that just on a one topic that's done by Gus and Duncan. You know it's gonna gonna cover what you need covering. Coin in the Galaxy, another one I've never been able to get hold of by James Gallo, breaking down the coins. Even things like I don't know if any of you boys have seen it, but the, have you seen the Tops books where yeah. each page is off the card? Yep. I've got that. It's a, it's a nice little. Uh, it's a toilet read one, you know, <laughs> flicking <laughs> through and having a having a little nose at them sometimes. I want to see a Palatoy book though. No one's done one of them yet. I think the problem with the Palatoy book is that dave tree has to be involved if, if there's someone with the knowledge for palatoy in this country who's going to take that by the, by the neck it's going to be dave tree and he's such a busy man so getting around to doing something like that is a huge job but there is palatoy experts out there isn't there that i think that it's been talked about for quite a while and it's a shame mark's not here tonight because i think he's uh, had contact about things like that i don't know how yeah. how much can be said on that i've had conversations with mark about such matters the ambition for, for the UK books is, is quite big. Maybe that's why it's not happened. Also, the, the Trilogo book. Joe O'Brien was heavily involved in the Trilogo book. I've heard rumours that was quite quite far into being ready. And then, then Joe quit quit Star Wars and went to Ghostbusters. You're kind of like, where's that information? Because the website used to be amazing. I know it's still up, but I don't think it gets the updates now or anything. But a Trilogo book. Trilogos are so popular now. It's um, incredible they're not out there because there's so many variants of each card, isn't there? And finally, <laughs> there's the... Um, the guidebooks just the general guidebooks now i know a lot of them are on here that we're going to be looking at tonight we've already mentioned tome outs we've mentioned gus and duncan's have done a few sand suite's done some action figure ones which have already been bought up you got the mark belomo books anyone else own the mark belomo books yeah i got the action figures one which covers not just vintage but then goes through the range doesn't it so yeah that's yeah. quite a nice one actually and as craig said i think that's a nicely designed book which um lots of pictures i was always surprised it, it got a bit of bad press actually when it came out to be fair i think it's beautifully laid out breaks down the, the figure shows you what accessories you should have for it and whatnot i think the pricing in it he released the prices and i think they were way off weren't they on his actual release i think that was always the the negative thing about it but mark belomo when i look at my books he was the one that wrote the gi joe book and the transformers book and that's obviously something he does in all his books the price guide is in all of them and i know that he's just done a second edition of that star wars book i think it's currently out whether he's updated those prices and whatnot the only thing that i was a little bit more disappointed about on each page rather than talking about the toy he talks about what they were on screen yeah which 
when I'm buying a toy book, I want to know about the toy, you know. But nice books, you're right, Jez. It is it is nicely laid out. And um I think they're reasonably priced as well. I think you can get those for under twenty quid on Amazon. Yeah, I think so. and and do you know what? That's the one where I don't know if you're like me, but you used to sort of if you had spare a little bit of time and you're out in a sort of shopping area, you think, oh, I'm going to nip into that charity shop, see if I can buy a, a Kellerman book. <laughs> that was always me at the beginning of my sort of Star Wars collector journey. I was like, yeah, I've got to get one of these Kellerman books because at the time I think they were something like £60 and then went up to ridiculous prices. And I think they've now crashed a bit in, in price since the PDF came up, out. You know, oh, have they really? Well, right. well, I bought one about probably about a year ago. Right. I didn't keep it for too long. It was a nice book, but... yeah. The information, I'm actually talking about it tonight, but the information's a little bit dated in it. So anything you kind of read, I found you were going online to double check that that was still yeah. correct. for the And for the price of that book sitting in my collection, that was the price of a mint on card. Yeah. So I think it got... Um, Always used to go looking for them. and, uh, and then, But occasionally you'd find their sort of um, marked book and you'd get it for about three or four quid. I think there's a there's a, there's a distinction with the types of books we've just just spoken about. So the, the the former ones, the ones where you know they're 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 fans with a passion. They've written these guides to proofs or prototypes or coins. It's come from a place where there's a lot of love and and, and you know they, they cherish that aspect of their hobby. And I think that really comes through these publications. But then there's another school of books which I think just come from that tradition of price guides for antiques because that's a long tradition in publishing and Star Wars became hot, so they thought oh, we better do a book about this new trend. And and that's sort of the genesis of those. And they're, they're quite distinct things, aren't they? You're right, especially the early days. I know you're going to talk about some, but there's there's things like House of Collectibles, which we're not mentioning tonight, released several books, didn't they, with prices yeah. in. And they were very much like a, you can like a Tome them. Master Guide, weren't they? But with... Tell they've been oh. commissioned. <laughs> you know, they've not yeah. come from a fan. I've, I've got one here, a Beckett Guide, Everything You Need to Know About Collecting Star Wars by Brian Semling. And it's it's very pretty and it's got some beautiful photographs. But as a as a uh, you know, as a book of information, as a resource, it's pretty useless. And I think there's a lot of that stuff out there that's kind of being overshadowed by the people who are getting it right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what we've chosen and why we've chosen that. We all chose three things each. We're going to start with you, Craig. We're going all the way back to 1987 for the official price guide to Star Trek and Star Wars collectibles by Sue Cornwell and Mike Cott. Yes. To, to talk about this, everyone has to picture a very different time. So I bought this from Forbidden Planet in the late 1980s when Forbidden Planet was one shop on New Oxford Street. And uh, it was the first collector's guide to Star Wars I'd ever seen. And I just had to have it. And to describe it, it's, you know, it's very basic compared to a lot of things we've, we've talked about and we'll discuss in a bit more detail. It's a sort of small paperback novel format. It's not a large format book by any stretch. Two thirds of it are dedicated to Star Trek and the last third is dedicated to Star Wars. It's entirely black and white and it's basically a massive list in a kind of checklist format. So it's got a list product ranges. It's got a little box that you can tick off if you've got it uh, and then there's a price range sort of down the uh, the right hand side margin so it's it's very text heavy very very few photographs you look at the information that's in there now and you know for instance there's no variants listed not even things like the vinyl cake jower it's just just one figure but for the time it probably does a fair job of listing things it's obviously incomplete especially when you look at international things so for for an instance uh, for instance, I looked at kind of the letter set and the large ones are listed, but not the small ones. So when it, get, when it gets a bit international, it gets a bit woolly. But, for, you know, the core US product, I think it's pretty solid. And this was my field guide for years. You know, I checked the boxes. I scribbled my own notes into it. It was very well thumbed. You know, this this was something that really, really helped me when I first started collecting Star Wars because I didn't realize half of this stuff existed. And there was a mystery to it as well because it was just a listing in a you know in a page of text. So to read about these things and not see pictures was was quite tantalising. But that's all there was. Makes me sound very old. I was eight when this came out. <laughs> that's probably only just getting into Star Wars toys. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yeah, I was on the second time around buying it all again. Yeah. So it's, this the one I had was the second edition. So there was a there was a first edition which um, I would imagine had more Star Trek than Star Wars, and, and slowly that got bigger and bigger. By the time it came to the third edition, which I do have as well, which I got, I got in a job lot of stuff, it was more fifty fifty, and it had introduced some colour pages uh, into the middle, slightly better laid out. 
um, and a few more pictures. But as you know, I'm offering them up as curios. You know, they're interesting things just to see where all this start is. You know. Yeah, I googled uh, Sue Cornwell and Mike Cotton. They were they were clearly more connected to Star Trek than Star Wars generally. I've just mentioned House of Collectibles, and these were House of Collectibles. They're under their pseudo name, weren't they? They were under that umbrella, which I didn't realise. Does it buy it, use it, become an expert? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I did two of those things. <laughs> Became an expert and bought it. <laughs> bought it and used it. <laughs> so, but Craig, we're going we're gonna to stick with you because you move on to uh, 1990. Yep. I'm just starting secondary school. Space Adventure Collectibles by T.N. Tumbush. Yes, good old Tom. So this... Um, this was a this was a quantum leap in terms of uh, my collecting guides. So this this came around 1990, published by Tomart, and it's pretty much the precursor to the very uh, very well loved Tomart's guides that a lot of collectors hold dear, uh, and the ones that roped in Steve Sansweet later as a co-author. But this was this was just um, Tom Tunbush on his own, and um, it's great because it includes other franchises so as the name suggests it's space adventure collectibles it's not all star wars although it's fair to say the majority is but it covers it covers a lot of other kind of sci-fi tv uh, and film uh, properties some of which are kind of quite obscure i mean you've got things in there like um uh, space patrol and tom corbett uh, and you've got sort of lesser licenses like v and um, dune things that kind of only lasted a certain amount of time but it was always quite nice to sort of flick through this and look at it in that wider context. You know, I've never been a obviously Star Wars is a focus for me, but I've never been exclusively Star Wars. So this is this was great. You know, it, I used it all um, in terms of sort of the information in there, layout wise and kind of design wise. It starts to adopt you know the layouts and conventions that you're familiar with from Tomart. So you've got a lot more imagery in there. You've got um, the introduction of code numbers, so you can cross reference images to what's in the listing. It's a little bit clearer. It's still got the price guides in there. I think that's what a lot of these books sold themselves on. You know, ooh, I've got this. What's it worth? And they were always a little bit spurious. You know, these, these things are kind of out of date as soon as you've, you've printed them. But um, this book was so important to me in the early days. I'll tell you how important it was. I covered it with clear sticky back plastic like it was a school textbook. <laughs> you still got it like that as well. It's still there. It's held up very well. It's, it's thumbed and, you know, much, much loved. But... Yeah, I just wanted to show it some appreciation because it was it was the start of it all and uh, opened up such a, such an, a, a broader world. Seeing some of those images for the first time, you know, what the hell is that? I and mean, it's just suddenly on your radar and it's part of what you're about. And it's just great. It was just sort of a little bit of magic, really, that, you know, I'm never going to get from a modern book nice as they are. You know, this was an artifact from a happy time. I think those days with with books as well, you, you didn't have the internet, did you? So no, not at all. Yeah, this this kind of focused you. Now every, everything's at your fingertips. Whatever you want to look at, you fancy a different toy range, you type it in, and it's it's on some some website. But um, yeah, this was all you had, wasn't it? it was your Bible, and That's it. I think that uh, that made those books that extra little bit special. Lovely choices, Craig. Very um, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So we come over to what I would have chosen. This would be my my favourite book. Uh, mine is extremely well thumbed every time i read it i'm on ebay searching for something dan 1994 steve sansweet you'll hear him i mate. and yep. and again tom tom bush was involved in this i hope i'm saying his name right um <laughs> released the tomots price guide yeah so yeah i mean it's a fantastic book i got i got mine i think about only six or seven years ago when i kind of exhausted all of the stuff around Kenner and his, and Palatoy and all of that, and just to see what else was out there. I think it was Grant was was talking about it, and I, I picked a copy up off of Amazon. And I've probably read this more than any other book in my collection. And you know, I think like you, say, you can just flick through it and just find something you've never seen before and go, oh, "What's that?" and go and do a search. And I like to play a game with it. You know, every time I do find something, I on eBay I'll buy it or get it. I go right, this won't be in. There's no way this is going to be in this book. There's no way this Empire Strikes Back foam shampoo and bath foam is going to be in there and you go in there and it's there I, I i don't think i've managed to find anything yet that isn't in there it's really extensive um covers i've got the first edition right so there's two of them i think there was a second edition in 97 as well but i've only got the first one and it, and it just covers the whole period from 1977 all the way through up to what do you say it was 93 94 it came out and it's yeah it's it's, yeah. it's fantastic i mean it's got most of it's black and white 
but there's some great images in there and it's just every page is just filled with you know stuff that you know you've never seen before and probably never will some of this stuff some of the kids clothes and t-shirts and um all the way through to arcade cabinets it just covers the whole the whole range books posters um it's got the price card at the bottom some of those are quite entertaining looking at some of the uh the prices of some of the figures back then compared to now but that's all part of the i think part of the novelty of it as well you, you mentioned the price card so there, there is I, f- I find it fascinating looking back because it's kind of it yeah kind of out that, that history but um being a sigma collector when i first started collecting sigma what five six years ago yeah i looked in there and some of the sigma of what the prices were at that point were actually cheaper than what was in that book obviously again perhaps the internet had made them easier to pick up there was pieces there is a couple of pieces of sigma which are extremely rare but that price guide at that point i thought to myself oh you know some of it was like 50 quid cheaper 50 dollars cheaper than what was shown in that book although sigma in the last six months has gone stupid but yeah that's another story but yeah i did find that and i must admit every time i open it up i see that coat i don't know if you've seen it the coat hooks that cannot i've never seen one for sale and it really excites me every time i open my time what's guide i go straight on ebay but never found it yeah yeah it's it's a fantastic book it really is and I, you know it's a great little you know time capsule from back then there's some color pages in the middle as well i think there's, there's a couple of sections when it jumps to some color pages and great kind of montages of all different items um you know the kind of stuff it's got all the displays all the store displays of the glasses in the uh the toys in the toy shops all the what they called the headers and the and the um display boxes stuff that you know uh, you know it's pretty you know if you go on some of the groups on facebook you'll find it but you don't get to see it all in one place like this in some of these images and i think you know talking about the internet you know saying oh we've got that now it's fantastic but you still got to go hunting for it to have something you just pick up off the shelf and leaf through and go oh, well what's that i've not seen that before kind of lead you down a bit of a rabbit hole if i ever um if I ever go away for like a weekend or whatnot, I always stick a couple of Star Wars books in. The Tomats is always one of them. I just love it. I just, oh, I just love it. I even, I think I took it to the last fax, Jez, that we went on when you nearly killed us in a bus. Yeah, yeah you did. Um, <laughs> I think even then I was like on eBay when we were away because <laughs> I had the Tomats guide in my hand, and it's a. Uh, such a joy mm. Have you ever managed to find something that you know and buy it and then go to the book go to that book and see if you could find it in there and not find it or is it if you there, always found that it's there I, I will there is there is quite a lot missing in it but right if you think that that's what 26 years old that book and like we said pre-internet we we we, we are steve sansweet this so perhaps people you know better to go back and listen to that but the research that goes into something like that when there's foreign lines and all sorts in there to go and find and research that, to put that book together, but it is so defining. There is, there is things, there is little things missing. But what do you expect for a book that's 26 years old? And mm. I think if you, I think if you got Gus and Duncan's um, comprehensive guide alongside it, there's stuff in there which they've obviously found to exist since then. But you know, they're still discovering stuff now, aren't they? Mm. Great choice. And uh, obviously, we are doing our big giveaway of books at the end of the month on the last show the 30th if you're voting with the covers you will be in the draw i will make sure that the tome arts guide is in there because i think everyone needs to own that so i will um i will source that whilst daniel talks again in a minute but um yeah great I was choice just actually having a little look i mean it is a good choice you look at collecting books which really really span such a <laughs> such a vast array of cash don't you kellerman etc but these ones are pretty reasonable just yeah. looking online you get some sort of yeah all right slightly dog-eared ones and a, there's a couple on ebay where it says you know a couple of the pages are coming away from the spine but surely that just adds a bit of character you're talking change with postage of 10 pound note so yeah, definitely um, yeah, that's not bad at all. Good show. Have you have you got one, Jez? No, hence why I was looking at eBay. I'm doing this yeah, all the time. You, know you guys what, are talking I, to me a lot get it, about books. Get I it. would yeah. I would recommend it because it's just fun. It's a fun yeah, book, isn't it? Exactly. Do you know what you pick it up like like the let's let the Ewok Ice Capades. I'd never heard of that. And I interviewed interviewed uh, Amy Schoberg, who's a Ewok focus collector, and she was talking about the Ice Capades during that interview. And I was thinking, oh, I don't really know that. Opened up. Do you know what? How many times I've been for that Tomas guide and looked for it, and then I looked up the Ice Capades, and there's a little section on it with pictures of things that were came out for the Ice Capades. And you're just like, I've never noticed that before. Went on eBay. Really difficult to find anything though, so don't get excited if you want to do an Ice Capades uh, <laughs> um, uh, focus. But you always find something new in there. I think the and the, 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 the ninety four publishing date is a nice cut off as well. So it's all vintage. The the, the second yes. edition gets a bit muddy. Yeah, yeah. With with the sort of modern stuff. Whereas I think that first edition is just a really nice 
vintage guide. Yeah, you're right. It's just before the new stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. um, that is a I great, need, uh, great shout. I need some Return of the Jedi balloons. That's what I've just spotted in here. Well, good choice. Very good. You've you've obviously got that book, haven't you, Craig? I do. Yes. Yeah, Jez, do you need to invest in that one, mate? Letting yep. the team down tonight on that one. Or getting sorted, do I? <laughs> uh, Dan, you now this this was what made me laugh from interview, Steve, because this was where you really fanboyed the Star Wars scrapbook from 1998, which I've got. It's a lovely book, but um, you you really love this book, don't you? <laughs> I think um, I just got back into, well, say this is when I've kind of, I, I was, what was this come out? 98. So I would have been, uh, what would I have been? 19. And it was, I, I kind of started, decided that I was going to start collecting Star Wars. It was before I'd really discovered eBay or, or any of the toy shows or anything like that. So I was kind of out on a limb and I was just picking up bits and pieces, modern stuff really. And I, I really wanted to get vintage, but I, I spotted this in macro of all places. So I was out shopping with my dad and it was on sale for three pound fifty. I was like, "Oh, I'll get that," and it really inspired me. And it's everything. It's kind of led everything that I've got today is kind of from started with this book, and it's it's a strange book. <laughs> it's got um, it's it's it's, it's um, ring binded, um, hard heavy um, cardboard cover with a Velcro um, kind of holder, which is Darth Vader's mask on one side and Anakin on the other, and it's just it's just an array of stuff. It's got a timeline at the start of. Of, of Star Wars through from 1975 up until 98, just after the release of the special editions. And then beyond that, it's all kinds of stuff. So it kind of, it's some production stuff in there in terms of the filming of the movie. There's letterheads and things like that from the production, news cutting articles before the film came out, um, a reproduction of the first issue of BAMP for tracks, some sticker sheets. It's got a lion's made C-3PO head, which I'm assuming is off of a like an ice cream box somewhere along the line, probably before I was born. Yeah, it just it covers so much. And then it, it looks at some Japanese collectibles, some of the UK collectibles from back then. It's got things like the Lucite start on there from Empire Strikes Back, the cast and crew stuff, um, patches, just, just, just little odds and ends, really, the beyond the toy stuff. So it's kind of... Yeah, it's a strange book. I mean, it wouldn't be, uh, I suppose, a, a great book for anyone who's just starting out collecting today, maybe. There's more, you know, you've got your toe marks guides and you've got your, you know, from screen to collectible. But for me, just coming across that book, it just really set me on a journey. So that's why I've added that one to the list. It's a, it's a great celebration of what the hobby can be, isn't it? I think it's probably the first example of a book about collecting becoming a collectible in itself, which is quite a masterstroke on uh, Mr. Sansweet's half isn't it absolutely it's at least a few like that isn't it you've got the thousand collectibles book yeah that's quite nice but yeah, that I've comes got that. through into the modern as well doesn't it and the um i bought a, a book um actually at the rancho obi-wan uh, exhibit in in chicago the treasures of rancho obi-wan which is fan made stuff that he's been donated that's a lovely little lovely little book to to sit and have a little look through the things some of the stuff that people make and then donate to his mm. museum some amazing pieces in there and that's a volume one, so there must be a volume two coming of that, because it's got volume one written on the side, and they wouldn't do that if there wasn't going to be a volume two, would they, Dan? No. <laughs> you think not. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll Hyper Reels let me down, so we won't go there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jez, now, talking of Steve Sansweet, I think we're just like, I'm just looking through the list, and it's just like, yeah. we've had him on, and uh, now we're just giving him so much love. But I didn't see this one. I'm going to be honest, I didn't see this one making the list tonight. Did you not? No, it's a love. I've got it, Jez. In fact, I think I've got a few. It must have sold well because I think I've picked it up quite a few times. Yeah. Star Wars collectibles, the pocket guide. Yeah. Now these are great stocking fillers, and um, if we go back to the trend, which is Secret Santa and stuff like that, and there's a few pounds left over, it's always something which you can add into the mix. Now this is a um, yep tiny little book, quite literally pocket book. You're probably talking. Less than uh, two inch squared, I would have thought. It's uh, it's a lovely little treat by Steve Sam's, which came out in 1998. And before I go on, these can be picked up now for about three or four pounds on Amazon, probably eBay as well. But what I like about this is it was perfect because you can just have it in your pocket. You can, you know, if you go to um, Star Wars conventions or celebrations, I took this with me because I thought, yeah, why not? And uh, you should have seen the look on Steve Sansweet's face when <laughs> when I went to Rancho Obi Wan, and people were queuing up to get book signs, and you know he was doing his big book signings for his latest book, and uh, and I rock up with this tiny little thing, and uh, join the queue, and uh, he looks at, at me as if to say, "Brilliant, is that it? Thanks very much." Um, however, it's signed uh, with the four Steve Sansweet, 
12th of April 2015. So uh, Anaheim. But what's you great, have to write that over like eight pages. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you got a magnifying glass out of the study hand. Um, but this just gives you a little snippet of 60 full colour pages, Star Wars memorabilia. And um, you've got everything in here from the, from the absolute crazy. You know, we've seen different things in which get this Star Wars logo on. We've spoken about these, Stu, before. You and I have the uh, the old dog chew or the dog chow, the meaty beef flavour of what looks like some sort of rabid cocker spaniel leaping across. Nothing to do with Star Wars. However, you can get some Return of a Jedi character stickers. So um, that's one of the most unusual tie-ins, the 1990, uh, what was it, the 83 campaign for Australia's Harper's Dog Chew. Uh, there's dinnerware in there, stamps, phone cards. Uh, it obviously covers the die cast and the original figures. It talks about the cups. It talks about the 12 inch, the costumes. You name it. It's a lovely little paragraph on each one. It's nice color pictures there. Serial. It's just a little bit of fun. So you know we're we're talking different books here, which, as you say, in some cases, are the price of a carded figure. And uh, and this book is certainly less than the cost of a beta. So, you know, the Star Wars mallow shapes, it just gives you a nice little reference about how these things came out. 1978, Darth Vader and mallow shapes from England. And then it, it just gives you more information. Belt buckles, banks, etc., etc. So just a little bit of a fun. doesn't take itself too seriously, which has been uh, really nicely put together with a lovely introduction and a uh, really well designed cover. So, um, yeah, you didn't see it coming. But it's just one of those ones where if I were to go away to Celebration or uh, to the next Father's From, it might just go in my little rucksack. Do you like it because you've got Jeremy Beadle hands and it makes them feel like a normal song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's got all sorts in there. But I, I do like it because it does. Yeah, I like it for a whole host of reasons, Stuart. Why did I say 60? Why did I say 60 pages? It's got 128. It's awesome. Has you only counted the one on the left as you went through it? Uh, 60 pieces of Star Wars memorabilia spread over 128 pages. So there we go. Each 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 piece has a double page with a lovely photograph taken up the whole page. And then um, and then the uh, information on the opposite page. Great stuff. One for everyone. Uh, Craig, we're coming back to you next. Yes. Um, we're going to 1999. I, I love this book. I think it's a great book. And uh, you, you've, you've gone with a surprisingly and it is a big surprise this is a steve sansweet book <laughs> <laughs> the, the star wars action figure archive book yes whether it was originally a steve sansweet book i'm not sure because it was it was released in 1999 by virgin in the uk but it was based on an, uh, on a japanese publication by nico publishing which was released in 1997 um and i know is, that there was, is this the book that's got edited by steve sansweet on the cover yes with josh ling so perhaps josh was the uh, the originator i don't know so this i know that the u.s edition was released by chronicle and if anyone knows chronicle books they are kind of the byword for very design-led uh, books very very great attention to detail and uh, and a real eye for aesthetic so when this arrived uh, certainly in the uk in 1999 you know, it was it was the coffee table book my hobby deserved. And the first time I'd seen anything of this quality. It's just, you know, a, a really, really nicely put together book. The photography is mouthwatering. It's it's just beautifully lit. And the pages just they, they bring together the action figures, the accessories, but also movie stills. And it kind of juxtaposes them in a really nice way. You know, the layouts aren't rinse and repeat. It's not the same every time. It's not to a grid or a formula. They've, they've thought about every spread. And you've got things like, you know, they've all, I've just got a page open here. They've got uh, Leah in a boost disguise. And they've got, you know, a shot of that tiny, tiny little thermal de- de- detonator she's holding in her hand next to the movie prop. And t- that level of detail was just, I'd never seen anything like it. And it sort of just became a very, 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 very important kind of guide, um, particularly at the time I was collecting Power of the Force 2. So it, it kind of had everything that I was into at the time sort of nailed. It's got an odd ordering. So it, it leads with the Power of the Force 2 line, sort of 95 to 97. And then it goes into the vintage figures. Obviously, it's a very comprehensive kind of look at those. And then there's this 1998 update kind of tacked on the end. So it's a... You can tell it's been on a journey, this book, via sort of Japan and, and the States, for it ended up in the, in the UK. 
it covers both large and three and three quarter inch figures. It's got the card back information in there, but it's very secondary to the to kind of what what the toys were outside the boxes. And yeah, it was just it blew me away at the time. I used it very much in conjunction with another book that I had uh, around the similar era, which was the the SU Fantasia guides, the kind of like very much sort of more catalogy thing, which is what I used to take to shows and and scribble in. So between those two, um, they were pretty indispensable for that for that era. I can remember um, having this. It was the first time I kind of saw a lot of the foreign stuff as well. There was like a page, wasn't there, at the end of each each of the um, movies in the vintage bit would have something like all the tri logos or all the power of the force yeah, and stuff. Yeah, a little kind of little, little kind of catch up page on the, on the Which deck. always which always confused me because he had like a proof card for I think it was the TIE Fighter on the Power of the Force uh vintage card and I was always like, Oh Yeah, I see that. Doesn't exist and uh, I think <laughs> was a Greedo in there as well. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. There's cards in there which which <laughs> never made it. So yeah, when I uh, first started coming through and you're trying to learn stuff, you're like, well no, that, that exists and they're like nah. It does it does it does say below are some issued proof cards. Well, there you go. <laughs> Perhaps I should read the text that goes with the page. Don't just look at the pictures, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I'll do it in a jazz. But yeah, so it's, I suppose the um, it was it was Power of the Force 2, wasn't it? And that's why it's led with that. Yeah, so. that was. I mean, that was big. It was big at the time, and it's it's kind of it focuses on that. But I think it, as a book, it still holds up. It's a nicely designed piece of work. Right. So moving on to um to my first book, actually, look. Craig Gowan, all about it, you know, the romance was the early book. So my first one is from 2003. A book, like I've just said, I've actually already already moved it on, but I thought it was worth, it needed mentioning in this rundown, and that was the Kellerman book, uh, released in 2003 by John Kellerman. Uh, a 256 pages, full colour book, and it offered in-depth coverage of everything, didn't it, to do with Kenner. Kenner car backs, proof cards. It, it was quite an incredible book, and it took him 10 years to write that book. And it, I know it was a, a real Bible for collectors who were trying, you know, had the card variants and stuff in there and everything you needed to know with, with regards to the hobby. So if you were a, a mint on card collector and a loose collector, your information at that period of time was in there. All the matrices in the back, obviously hugely helpful, but, but obviously it is, it is very un, outdated now. And it has been rumoured for years. Oh, he's going to do a second one, but I think uh, John Kellerman, isn't isn't as well and and it was kind of always put on a back burner so we never we never got that updated version but i know a lot of the um online matrices are all based from this initial research and then they've been added to and things have been updated over the years but quite a quite an impressive book i don't i don't believe it sold very well when it first um when it was released and i think that's why it holds such a a heavy price now because i don't think there's as many out there as what collectors would like so um a real shame i think someone maybe one of you boys knows it's a bit better, but didn't someone release this as a PDF, which was a bit cheeky? I remember hearing something, yeah. but I can't remember specifics. No. Yeah, I remember this is gone out and it went out as a PDF. I think there was this sort of general thing amongst the Star Wars collecting community where it was, yeah, if, uh, I can send you a copy of the PDF if you want. But um, I don't know anyone who's got it, but... Since then, I've not heard of, I've certainly not heard of as many people talking about the book. Maybe it's just those who've got it have, have now, um, everyone who's got, who wants one has got one. Or as you say, that maybe the demand isn't there because the internet has just become such a good resource and, and it's a little bit out of date. But yeah, there was definitely a PDF and maybe maybe this was three years ago or so, four years ago. It's a real, a real shame if someone had done that, that it wasn't helped to fund to fund uh, John Kellerman himself, because I know that, like I said, I don't think it's sold as well as what people would have liked compared to what how many people want it now. But yeah, yeah it's, it's not on really, is it? You know, someone, like I said, it's taken them 10 years to, to collate all the information for that book at the time. Hell of a project. And when when that PDF came out, now I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. I don't have it. However, when people were talking about it, I don't think there was a great deal of disdain. I don't think it was thought of um, it as a bad thing. So I don't know if this was actually brought out, maybe or not, with with his blessing. I, I really don't know. So I, I wouldn't want to be misquoted at all on that. But maybe it was brought out not through the back door, if you know what I mean. Maybe it was it was more accepted, right? Now this is available for everyone. I don't know. Um, but certainly when people were talking about it, it wasn't, oh, look at this. Oh, this is, you know, like you grading. And, and there certainly wasn't a massive 
um, sort of backlash about it. It just seemed, oh, fair enough. If anyone wants it, you can have a copy of the PDF. It didn't seem like anyone was doing anything bad. But I don't know. It was quite, as I said, it was a few years ago, so I'm not sure if I can um, recall it correctly. But yeah, I, th- I think it was even talked about on the Vintage Rebellion, or it may have even been Star Wars from a UK podcast. I must admit, it is a beautiful, beautiful book. Like I said earlier, I, I did move it on because because I wasn't using it for the information it was needed. It was just a nice book to pick up and have the odd look through at times. But to have that sort of money sitting on my bookcase where it could be invested elsewhere was was my reason for moving it on. But it's the kind of book that if I found it for the right price again, I would rebuy. So. Yeah, I, I've not owned it ever. I've, I've seen it a couple of times at shows and stuff. But yeah, I've had other things to spend money on, so I've not gone into that. A highly recommended book, but um, but for up to date information, you. I think um, I think Rebel Scum worked alongside John Kellerman actually, and at the time used to update the matrices over there. I don't know how right. how that looks in this day and age, but yeah. You know, we're we're talking across the whole spectrum of, of money now. I was looking earlier on at what when uh, Dan was talking about the scrapbook. Certainly, that sounded you know really good, and uh, so I've been trying to find the different books which the guys have been talking about the scrapbook which dan was talking about you can get for about 11 pounds there's a special offer on on ebay but this kelima one i'm looking at some sold listings 180 pounds 200 pounds 285 321 378 all sold wow uh, yeah i mean i don't know how long it is before we um, go live with this one there, there's one on ebay at the moment and it's still relatively low, but it's quite a few people bidding on it. But yeah, there. Uh, this book is still, still definitely holding its own. It's the only book I know from a Star Wars collecting point of view which gets over two hundred pounds. Do you think people spend that sort of money on it because it's more of a collectible now than yeah than a reference guide? I sold mine at um no I didn't sell it at the thing actually, but I t- I had mine on my stall at Echo Base in October last year, and I reckon a good thirty to forty people picked it up and had a nose through it. Obviously, no intention of buying it with the price. I did put it on um, Echo when I got back a few days later, and it sold instantly. Obviously, there's so many people that have never had the chance to look through it. And at that sort of price, you, you've got to weigh it up. It, it, it is a book, isn't it? It's kind of like it is a lot of money for something that you might not necessarily use. Yeah, I, I can't even remember what I funded with it. I reckon it might have been a nice bit of Imperial Dignitary merchandise, which we all need in our lives. Now, let's move it on because we're coming back to Jez. These are great books. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're going back to back with you for now, Jess. Back to but 2009, Gus and Duncan's Comprehensive Guide to Star Wars Collectibles. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I had 2008, but yeah, I think it's, it's that time. And um, yeah, this is, I mean, this is the one, isn't it? This is the one from a postage point of view. It's best to pick it up in person if you can. This is a beast. This is a hardback. If you imagine the yellow pages, but a hardback version, it's that. I mean, this is, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's Gus and Duncan's Comprehensive Guide to Star Wars Collectibles. Comprehensive indeed, because there's more than 77,000 pieces in here. Um, all all catalogued, and the way in which they've done this book, um, they, they've got a whole pages here set aside as to how they're categorising it, because this is covering the whole gambit. And yeah. 77,000 different pieces in here. So if you wanted a photograph of a particular packet of crisps with a particular flavour which comes under the Star Wars licence, the chances are it's in here. It has everything. And uh, and I've used this on numerous occasions when we've been doing research for other podcasts and we wanted to find something particularly unique. I mean, we talk about Gus and Duncan, you know, we've spoken about Steve Sansweet earlier on. Gus and Duncan, two of the really you know most well-known collectors out there on the Star Wars collecting circuit. You'd very much like them to be, you know, if it is it Gus and Duncan, very much like Ant and Deck. You know that Gus is always on the left and Duncan's always on the right, but it's not the case. So don't get confused with that. Um, but the, these guys are there, often um, leading the way, or Gus in particular leading the way with the Star Wars collecting track. These guys know it from with regards to their licensed bits and pieces through to Star Wars cast and crew and indeed props. But this book, what it doesn't have, as you can imagine, are large pictures. You know, there's 77,000 items in here. So be prepared to look with your glasses on and possibly a magnifying glass. But this covers everything. It's beautifully done in, in alphabetical order with regards to how things are. So it starts off with um, 
apparel goes through then books comics so on and so forth and then it lists them in, in country order and then in film release as well so you can think right okay so it hey it is very good for you finding something completely obscure but it is massive it's got every book covering so we're talking about books now on this there's a whole section here with, with all of the different book covers in there it goes on to comics you name it you have to uh, forgive sometimes some things which are lost in translation and different terminology uh, depending on uh, different countries. I know we all had a giggle when we looked up Star Wars suspenders, uh, but it's not how suspenders are in the UK. It was more to do with socks. A thoroughly, thoroughly decent book, which, which has got it all in there. And in fact, when this one was signed for me by Gus and Dunk, it says, yes, Jess, collect them all. Have fun with 77,569 items from Duncan and Gus, the completest publications. So really, really solid, stands out, really great looking uh, book cover, which yes, you guess it has got the uh, Death Star pencil sharpener, Star Wars coins, uh, and it's not just your standard American, Canadian, UK. This has got Meccano bits and pieces in there, Australia. You know, it, it's nice actually looking at this and then thinking, oh, right, yeah, I've got one of those, or I don't have one of those. And oh, yeah, it's got the yogurt pot. Comprehensive indeed. Weighs an absolute ton. How are you doing on that checklist that you gave you? What, the 77,000? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm winning. I think, you know, I, I, I've got more than I had last year. So, uh, glasses half full, buddy. Exactly. It is a great book. And we, we spoke about the Tomas Guide earlier. It's kind of like a, a more modern modern day version of that it's it's got all the listings like i said i think there's a lot of the areas which are in the tomas guide are updated with other finds that have been since and obviously it brings it up through the the prequels and whatnot as well so yeah you um you've got a lot of stuff in there it, it is to me it works in that same way as that book where you sit down and you can enjoy something and end up going on ebay you know it's really easy to find things in there you know, so as I said, yeah. they go into a whole page about how they've decided to categorise it. But it's really easy. 984 pages and hardcovers. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely one to start with for sure. So yeah. fun little anecdote. This this was a, a book that we took when uh, myself and Mark and Grant went to Helix to show them um, just where their old products has ended up in terms of uh, being collectible. We took this book and showed them their little uh, pencil sharpener on the cover and they were blown away that out of all of the products in there, <laughs> that, that that was on the front cover. Great. You, you, well, you would be, wouldn't you? Well, you would. Chosen your item. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Who um who had the, the enjoyment of carrying that round in their backpack? I think it was me. I brought everything. <laughs> Trip dad. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I said about the cover design? All, all credit to him and about how uh, how lovely the cover is and it does stand out well. Cover design, Matthias Randall. So uh, lots of work, lots of contributors, or primarily, um, so you've got Annie Jenkins, Julia Jenkins, Duncan Jenkins and Gus, but the cover design is by Matthias. So there we go. I've only just realised that as I was checking on the inside because, yeah, the first print was 2008. I have seen uh, videos of where they've gone through it in 2009, but... Um, yeah, lovely. But I didn't realise that was a Matthias front cover. Yeah, very nice. Can you imagine trying, where would you start trying to put that together? The, that kind of body of work? Well, I think they're the head start because they kind of have the archive, don't they? <laughs> well, yeah, that's a that's a very, very good point. But uh, yeah, it is well done, like all their books are. And Jez, you, you went with another one of Gus and Duncan's books, a bit like um, Dan being a fanboy of Sansweet. You you certainly like your Gus and Dunk. <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> For loads of reasons, this one's my favourite. No, sorry, I've just jumped the gun because you haven't actually, as I turn it over, you haven't introduced this one, have you? No, no. Well, you you, you knock on because they <laughs> obviously... Is it the Cast and Cruise book? No. No, this one, no, it's not. No, this is the uh, Gus and Duncan's Guide to Star Wars Prototypes. And, um, and you know what I said at the beginning about, oh, whether or not it's in your swim lane, whether or not it interests you, it's one of those things that you're going to collect... There's no way I'm going to collect prototypes. I'd love to, but I've been to the room sales. I know what you know these exchange for and stuff. And I'm, I'm just, quite frankly, I'm, I'm not in that market as much as I'd love to. So that's why this is the next best thing, because it, you know, I get to see it. It's, it's an incredibly visual book, which uh, pops out and it's graphic design again, Matthias Rendor. So. Uh, Gus and Duncan are, are the sort of brains and the knowledge behind it, but it's been beautifully put together. Uh, the, the front cover is it, it, great. It's, it's not at all crowded. 
Um, but this is just the dust cover. You take off the dust cover, excuse the noise while I do so. And then below that, just prototypes in a very much Kenner-esque um, uh, type uh, font. And it's just, uh, yeah, period 1977 to 1988. But it's just uh, aesthetically, Craig, have you seen this one? This one should appeal to you uh, um, amongst, I mean, this, I don't know who this wouldn't appeal to, but this is such a beautifully laid out book. Craig, have you, have you seen it? I've not seen it up close, no. Right, I'm going to have to lend this to you, though. But it's, I don't want to say it's done like a scrapbook at all. That's in, entirely wrong. But the way in which it's laid, the layers of this, if you can imagine, most of the pages are, are of a sort of mathematics book, which you'd have um, sort of the, the, what would you call them, the square grid? Yeah, it's a sort of gridded paper. How would you describe that? It's a graph um, paper? Yeah, so yeah, so just graph paper, but then with images on and notes which look like they've been stapled on to it. There's a shadowing element below it, so it very much looks like it's 3D. The photos on top of photos. It's just conceptually, it's just done very, it's a very easy to look at book, which has got a great deal of information. The glossary there at the end, which will which will lead you through all the different terminology with regards to how these things have been produced from start to finish with regards to your, your first shots, your proofs, your chromolins. Um, so this one came out, I think this was 2010, but it's got an introduction on prototypes. One of the uh, legendary um, rocket firing FET images there with regards to some sort of kid getting a rocket in his eye. But then it's stages of action figure production. It will talk that through with you. And then it goes into the small figures that we're used to. Um, Star Wars, Empire, Revenge. Return, uh, Revenge of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi, Power of the Force, Droids produced, Droids unproduced, Ewoks produced, Ewoks unproduced. And then it goes into the stages of packaging, production, goes then into vehicles, play sets and accessories, again by film, including Revenge of the Jedi. So you get to see all that sort of production stuff. Then the stages of the coin production, so the coins which came with Power of the Force, uh, large scale figures, die cast, micro collection, Toy Fair, then going into some miscellaneous and again, a glossary at the end. So over 333 pages, my most aesthetically pleasing. I absolutely love it. This is the one which I can go back to. And I think the reason I go back to it is because it's not one where you can retain the information or I certainly haven't been able to retain the in as much information. You know, I get mixed up with my, my first shots and the various different things. So, so I'll go back and use this as a great reference. But the actual feel of the book, the feel of the dust cover is ticking all of the boxes for me, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really good one. They are doing a they are doing a sale on them. Um, Duncan Jenkins, I thought I said to you before we started recording, Stu, they're doing a sale. So both books for sixty dollars, um, but the postage is massive. I didn't realise it was still available. So that this one still you can still get it, can you, Dan? Yeah, they said that, and they were they were doing it on a deal or no deal site. Sixty dollars, buy it now. Someone asked the question, "Is this you only doing this one batch?" And they said they've got a ton left, so I guess they're sitting on a few a few copies of each of them. So now you've said that, I'm, I think I might just jump in and <laughs> pay the postage <laughs> and get both books for like seventy quid. I mean, if you just um, if you just have a little look now at our private little message group, which we've got on uh, Facebook now, I've just sent you guys. Um, three random images which I've just take, take of the book and I know it doesn't photographs or whatever don't do it justice but you'll see what I'll talk about the graph paper and then the bits on top look like they've been stapled there and the, the photographs and the way it's all layered and shadowed the coin one in particular I think just it's just a really different visually um, appealing book which uh, yeah I, I love well worth it it's back to what we're saying about the start you know that the, these books are put together by people who have the passion and, and Matthias has the passion and the skills to do this, to do this. And it's brilliant. It looks amazing. But I think um, you hit the nail on the head and at the start, Jez, when you said, you know, these aren't the sort of things you, you know, I don't think any of us have, have got the sort of cash laying about. We can just go and spend, you know, whatever these prototypes cost now, but to have a book with it all in there, it's, it's going to be a good thing, right? Yeah, totally. Moving it on then, we're going to go on to Daniel's last, last choice. Um, something a bit different from Daniel this time. It's a Steve Sansweet book. <laughs> <laughs> the 2012 Ultimate Action Figure Collection. I love this book, Dan. It does make me buy modern toys. It is good. It, it, oh, I think the I think the first thing to point out, and I think the difficult thing about it is, and I, you know, we've I've experienced it. We've been doing the 
modern way podcast is it does only go up to 2012 and there's quite a few figures that have come out between 2012 and now but it, it kind of draws a line under the lucas era um george lucas era so it came out november 2012 which was kind of a couple of days after that the sale was announced to disney so it kind of covers all the three and three quarter inch that haven't got a disney logo against them so it's, it's nice in that way it's a nice i suppose time capsule of all of the lucas era action figures so it, it starts off um kind of laying out all of the um the methodology that they put together to to put the book together in terms of they've ordered it in the uh, sequence of characters so alphabetically each character is grouped together whether it's a vintage figure or a vintage collection figure they're all they're all clustered together um and then they're all laid out um nicely on a white background um in the vertical columns uh, and the on the edge of each page you've got some reference photos from the films from the clone wars to show which character relates to what and yeah and it just goes through the whole the whole chronology of all of the uh of, of each action figure it's got a little bit of detail against each action figure so some of them have got more than others so some of them might only have a sentence or two which describes whether the figure was a repaint or if it's a new mold um and then other figures like blue snaggletooth that's got a bit more of obviously a bit more history to it so there's a, a bit more on that yeah and it goes through the whole the whole collect the whole collections so i think there's two and a half getting on for two and a half thousand action figures in there and yeah it's a really great read and i think you know when people have the argument and they say oh you know is jabba the hut an action figure is blue snaggletooth really in the vintage line is the max rebo band should that be in the vintage line i think this kind of answers the question it's in this guide <laughs> it's that it's that good everything it kind of answers so many questions and it, it, yeah, it gives you all of the, the history of each of the action figures and, and, and where they've um, evolved from, you know, from Vinyl Cape Jawa all, for, all the way through to the, the latest iterations in 2012. So, yeah, it's a really, yeah, a great toilet book, I think, as you describe it, Stu. Yeah, you can't beat a good toilet book. Um, no. I, th- I, I just like it. I find it very easy the way it's broken it down. Yeah. You, you look up the characters, but you can also check very, very quickly which card it came on. I like that, um, going for certain cards and whatnot. Out of all the books... This this one to me is the one that's screaming out for a an update. It's eight years eight years now since that came out. There's there's been an awful lot of figures in that time, so um it would be great to see an updated one, wouldn't it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, going back to the, the kind of the uh, beginning of the book where it kind of gives all the the people that have helped him out write it. The Jedi Te- Jedi Temple Jedi I can't even say it, Jedi Temple archives are, are listed. So obviously they've they've had a had a had a hand in that as well. Because I know that's quite a reference we use quite a bit when we're doing the modern way. Yeah, it is a good book. And it, it's another one. I love the cover of it. I just love looking at all the different... They've used figures from every era, haven't they? Which is um, which is nice. I, I like the little conga line on the back page, the very back page. You've got a little uh, line of uh, Stormtroopers Storm in a conga led by, <laughs> uh, led by Vader. Yep, great choice, Daniel. That just leaves me with two more up-to-date books. I was actually... When I say up-to-date, I was really quite surprised, actually, when um, we went to go for the French Touch and I, I found out it was 2013 because I have had it for years, actually, but... Of all of the books which cover countries, so like I said, we've had the Argentinian one, we've had the Canadian um, Irwin's Toys one, we've had uh, the POC one, which I'm going to get onto in a minute. But but this to me is a real complete guide. I think it's so beautifully laid out. So you you open up, it tells you a bit about about what the toy situation was in France and has a bit of like the press coverage and newspaper articles and gives you the um that kind of taste of what things were like over there there's some great magazine covers from some of their magazines which are probably very famous in france to start with then it just breaks down everything so you it breaks I'm, I'm always being amazed by the french I, I always think the um not by the french let me get that right i mean the french uh the card backs i am um, i love the the meccano card back look i love the meccano logo reminds me of Makana was a toy to me when I was young. It was always the metal, screw it together kind of toys. I always used to just think that was what Makano was. But it just goes through all the toys. It goes through the tri logos, which have certain Makano bubbles, explains what the bubble is, and then it just goes through everything: ads, catalogs, adverts from the Ewoks line to model ships that are available out there to to masks to jigsaws. It's got the lot in there, and it's really, really beautifully. Um, beautifully laid out this is where i first saw the amora mustard glasses and uh where i first fell in love with them and completed that, that line such a such a great book has any of you boys got this yep yep it's one it's it's not one which i go back to a lot i, I read it pretty much cover to cover when i got it but I, i've not read it since so i think i need to go back to it again i it, it's uh, to be fair it's one of those books i get out and i could, I could buy stuff all the time i think the um <laughs> 
the food products and premiums, the um, I think they're the stickers or the cards. I don't know what they are. Oh, here we go. Coloured plastic cards. But some of the artwork that was done over there is stunning. And I just just looking at a different country's take on Star Wars and the way they kind of portrayed it. I just I just find it a real fascinating uh, yeah. flick through from, you know, everything, the posters and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, the French, I would, I'd love to get hold of it, but the magazine, we've all, we'd all know the image where a naked Princess Leia is kissing C-3PO. Do you know the image I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've not seen that. Oh, I would, I'd know what, if there was a poster, I would I would absolutely love it. I do, um, I do own that. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I've got one, yeah. Ah, oh, do you know what? It's the one thing, whenever I open this book up, I'll say, I must find that, I must track that down. Such a wonderful, wonderful image. See, this is a problem, isn't it? I've just put naked layer kissing video <laughs> on Google. And um, you don't want to see what my return... Actually, you, you might want to see what's returned. <laughs> but, uh, uh, everything but that image. But, um, yeah, perhaps we can... F- we'll, we'll source that for the enhanced the enhanced show because it is a great, great picture. That's hand-drawn, Dan. It's, um, it's a really fascinating image. What? It's in a, in a magazine called Charlie, is it? Charlie something, yeah. It begins with them. Charlie Men- Mensal? Something like that, yeah. But that, that, that's one book I'd really be interested in getting. So those square cards, I, mean, I know it covers more than that, but the square cards, if I had the money, that's I think I would, uh, I'd go for a run of those Meccano square cards. I do like those. But as a book goes, The French Touch, I would highly recommend, actually. It is a book that I enjoy flicking through regularly, just looking at the pictures, really. Not just that one, by the way. That's, uh, <laughs> that wasn't, that's not what this book's about to me. But that, so that leads me on to my, my final book, which, a bit like the intro show, really, I bought two the party on this but that's because there's two volumes now this is a book by javier ru lopez he's done a two books to do with the pbb and poc poc range now i bought this i thought this would be really really useful when i was on the podcast so the first book's all about the figures and it talks about the um about pbb uh, about what the company was it's got a couple of um interviews in here with people that worked from there and and goes through goes through their their factory and what they were and blah 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 blah. but then it goes through goes through the card backs which is which is lovely but then it goes through the figures one by one loose variants and so a double page for each figure so you've got luke skywalker and it's got a picture of him on his debut card on there and then it has got the standard kenner figure alongside the pbb figure you've got the full figure and then you get everything else so you get a back copy you get the legs where the coup is you know you can see the differences between what's what the weapon up close one of each the kenner and the uh, pbb release his hands his hair when it comes to luke so you can see that in fact luke's got um luke's got two pages full but then you've got Leia, and you've got the same again the weapon up close her hands up close so the differences the face up close and it breaks it all down in writing exactly what is the difference so if you're a variant collector, um, it's an amazing book because it literally goes through every figure page by page. They're all in there. Beautiful book. Um, I must admit, it's not one that I used a great deal unless we were talking about PPP. So when the second one came out, I didn't jump on it on its first release. And then I, during lockdown, I um, I saw that it'd gone gone up again. Javier was uh, promoting it, and I thought, right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna get it this time. But the second book to me is absolutely stunning. It reminds me a bit more of the um, the French book. It, it's the, the the imagery in it is is beautiful. So this goes in a bit more in depth with Spain. So you've got all the ships in there this time, the board games. You've got um, this paperwork from PBB, kind of like order sheets, all kinds of stuff, adverts like you get in the French one, uh, magazine covers. It's I tell you what is lovely in here. We we've spoken before about the old toy catalogues. They're in here, and then they show you every page that's got Star Wars on it. When you're looking through for um, those kind of things, it just it just breaks it all down to you. It's got all the card backs again. It's just it's just a wonderful, wonderful book. And the images are really big, really big and bold. I'm I'm enjoying this second one. It's something that I ever go into a lot at the moment and just sit and read in it. And in fact, actually, compared to the first one, there's not actually a lot of text. I mean, the last hundred pages of it are all just real close up images of the ships, the packaging and everything. Yeah, 450 odd pages in there, and it, and then they're beautiful, and they were quite reasonably priced as well. So um, if you get the chance to pick up the two together, I really do recommend it. They are so nice, and Jess, you should have it. It's got an X-wing on the cover, which is your focus. <laughs> yeah, all right, mate. I think I've done quite well tonight. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting there buying books, aren't it? <laughs> <laughs> I am. Have you used it at all, um, Stu, to identify any pock figures? Have you looked I for a load of loose and found any ever? I'll, I'll I'll be honest with you. 
Um, I have, I've got loads of loose figures, mate, but I have never, ever checked on a variant in my yeah. life. I've got a handful that I think are, but I haven't. That sounds like a really good way of nailing it on whether they are or not, I suppose. If you've got that comparison, I've got like a Dengar with brown armor, like, like almost a really dark brown armor and a handful of others. I think Han Hoff with a pink face and yeah. I've always wondered, but never really delved that much into it. But that feels like beer. It's, a, it's really good for that. I think, you know, variant collecting is perhaps a, a standalone show at some point because yeah. there are people who, who are, I've, I've seen them now. I, I sit at Echo and I will sit with the likes of guests would normally be there or something. And we'd be having a beer and talking absolute nonsense. And you see these guys with like little magnifying glasses stuck in their eyes and examining figures at a table at nine o'clock at night. And you're just like, you're nutcases. And <laughs> the, thing, <laughs> the things that they're looking at is just, it, it, I find it incredible to me. I like a, a variant to me is something that I, if they're on a shelf and I'm looking across the room at it, I can see there is a, a difference. Yeah. Not, oh, this one was, he's got a, um, a very different shade of brown on his boot. But they are quite different out of pop figures though, aren't they? They're a bit, oh yeah, you, know, you can see in there, there's, especially yeah. the paint on the skin colours, it's very, very pale on a lot of them. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Blatant variants, I get. Sometimes I'm, I'm in some of those variants groups and someone might post a photo, oh, I've got 30 Luke Best Bins and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, yeah, there's couple of hair differences but basically you've just lined up different degrading stages <laughs> of a loop best bin but i'm sure there's more to it you know that that is mm. their passion everyone's got something different in the hobby but um yeah I, I find it a little bit bonkers so i would love to uh, cover that at some point if there's one collectible book that you boys would um you would buy that that's out there well what would you most add at the moment what would you love to add i think for me the the new proof book is something that is right up my street which i've never i've never bought but yeah, I'd, I'd quite interested in that one, I think. Yeah, being a designer it would make make a lot of sense. I've seen sort of you know scans of pages from it. It looks 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 great. I think I'm going to lock on to those two Gus and Duncan books. They sound really good. Cheers. What about you? Oh, you've probably added. I think you've added the scrapbook and the concept and uh, <laughs> yeah, the tome arts way. Well, like... No, I'd, I'd I'd probably go for the Kellerman. If if money was an object, I wouldn't mind just having a little look at the Kellerman one. Yeah, it's a nice book. I think I would like to add something like the um, the Canadian book I haven't got. That'd be quite nice to put in there. Or perhaps the Coin in the Galaxy. I would like like to have a flick through. But yeah, interesting. Now, just before we close out, obviously, like I said, people seem to be releasing collecting books quite often. But what isn't out there that you would most like to see? I know we've already mentioned a Palatoy book. Uh, Jez, if you could get a certain someone to write a certain book for you, what, what would it be based on? Um, there's all sorts of cast and crew stuff out there. So this has probably been done, but I just think I'd love to read a book by um, a collector, someone like Pete Vilmer, who's going to have such a vast knowledge of Star Wars collecting in the round, who, you know, is a fan, who is a fan who's done enough to uh, to, to do the Star Wars collecting tracks and whatnot. So I think it'd be great to see something that he's done. Um, there's other reference books and other Star Wars related books, which I'd love to see, which aren't out. But from a collecting point of view, yeah, I think a Vilma book would be good. Nice choice. Uh, Craig? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Palatoy is a glaring, glaring omission in the whole of this. But not only Palatoy, but UK licenses. That's that's what I'd like to see. The the, the, the UK equivalent of the French touch, you know, with, that covers everything. Who yeah. would write it? I think it's already been written. I think it's all out there. It's be a question of collating it, you know. I think you've probably got a, a collecting book in you, Craig. Yeah, I would throw my hat into the ring. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would certainly help. Um, I, and I think it would need to be a collaborative thing. You, you mentioned Dave Tree. I mean, there are obviously other obvious people with big collections. It's a UK base that spring to mind. And I know conversations have taken place. I don't know. It's a big question of why we haven't got one. Why hasn't this happened? Lazy British. That's what we're about. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we just like, trying to achieve the impossible or maybe egos are involved. I really don't know. Dan? What would you like Steve Sansweet to write next? <laughs> well, uh, good point. <laughs> Strap yourself in. <laughs> so I would like to see all those guys at the start. So Sansweet, Gus, the, the guys that were going to Kenner and Dumpster Dive and all that, just going back and telling some of those stories, you know, obviously with the photographs sort of that tells that story with the, the prototypes they found, the, the the proofs and everything else. Just just tell those stories because you listen to them on, on some podcasts, don't you? And some of it sounds it's so entertaining. Some of it's some great stories there. It'd be really good to get some of that documented and out there. I mean, what 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 Craig was saying before the Palatoy and all that. That's that's a given. We need that. But you know, beyond that, that that's kind of what I'd uh, I'd like to sink my teeth into and sit down and read one day. What about you, Stu? 
I think <laughs> I would. I th- obviously, there is books being rumoured around, isn't there? I think um, Joe Wise is, has got the basis of a, a bootleg book already written. There's all sorts of areas. I, I like I like the books that are on topic for when I need something. So I, I think a diecast book is. I yeah. think a delved in with you. You could prototype it. All the variations would make a great book. Um, I know Andy Norton has thought about it several times, but he's never got around it. And you go through the countries. I quite like the Italian stuff. I always like the um. The, how do you say it? Guerre? Guerre Stellari? I always like the logo. So like the French book, I'd like. I like to see an Italian version of the book coming right up because I even like the um the gig Power of the Force Two stuff. So the logo is always amazes me. So perhaps another one of those books just to fit in. I think a Japanese book would be good, wouldn't it? Think yes, about it. You, think about, one, yeah. you know, if you think about the um, Sudoku, Poppy, Takara, all the different ones, the Disc Foreign R twos. I mean, crumbs. There'd be a whole chapter on R twos alone. So um, did you just say Sudoku? I did. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I remember it. The scooter. Yeah. I, can, I can get you a Sudoku, a Sudoku book, mate. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's that's how I've always been. It's, it's Sudoku with a T at the beginning. Brilliant. So uh, yeah, you, you're right though. It's because even they had a lot of differences, didn't they? You had those funny seven-inch figures, the Zecta stuff. Was it Zecta or Zetka? The diecast things came out over there. They were different. They had the um those figures with like the shooting missile from R2 and stuff. So real different. Different toy cool. lines over there. I think you cracked it, Jez. I think that's the next book we need, the Japanese one. Being Japanese, you would have to. I, th- I think this is right. The the book, Craig, you um you've collected a few of the Japanese books in the past, haven't you? The books have to uh, read the other way, don't they, to what we're yeah. used to? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. starts at the end and then work backwards. What, so what, I mean, like, in 1985, Star Wars stopped, and then it goes backwards. <laughs> like, I think a book on bedding would be interesting for the ages. Soft yeah. furnishings. Wallpaper. Helmets. Yeah, you could be in that one, Jez. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could do a book on on the almost on the negative side of collecting. I mean, if you think about Toy Tony, you, you could do a whole lot of stuff on Toy Tony. You could do a whole lot of stuff on Baggy Gate, on Repros, on on basically on you know you could, you could, stuff in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. it could be on all sorts. The things we've not mentioned is probably worth a shout is that uh, is the prop store catalogs. They're almost collecting books in themselves. They are. Yeah. The information in that first one, where the very first toy auction was incredible. And having people like Chris G and that working on it behind the scenes. I mean, yeah. well, knowledge. Yeah, you're right. They are amazing. I am going to do a little blog post so we'll get some images of some of the insides Indeed. of the books to come alongside this. So don't expect it to be up to Craig's standards. I think this is the problem on the podcast. We say, why hasn't anyone else read the blogs? But Craig's done his blogs and put a lot of pressure on the rest of us to, to how they've got to be. But um, Just words and pictures. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, I will uh, try to break it down. And also, while we've been sitting here, I am um, obviously we are giving the big book prize away in the last show. Now, all you need to do to get involved in that is go and vote on the cover art. You only, as long as you've got a reference on there voting, you will be in with this draw now. It's already well over 10 books and of, of all sorts. Everything, every book has been somehow kind of discussed during this month. And I've added the Tome Arts Guide. And I've also added one of the early collecting books like Craig was talking about with those early price guides from the 80s. So a um, bit of a bit of fun thing to look into while you're uh, sitting on the toilet, as we have uh, <laughs> we all seem to like to do that. <laughs> but um, they've been added as well. So if you uh, go and check out the YouTube channel, you'll find enhanced versions of majority of the shows just search generation skywalker check out all our social media facebook instagram and twitter just search generation skywalker across those and of course check out all the podcasts available on all of your podcast outlets or go to the website www.generationskywalker you will find links to the blogs to the site um, to the enhanced versions to the shows links to everything on there if that's the easiest way but boys thank you thank you so much we're um getting towards the end of this month been a lot of work thank you all for um delving in and i will see you all on the uh, the closing show so it is good night from dan good night everyone good night from craig cheerio and good night from jez that's the end of this chapter and it is good night from me we are generation sky
Dan, you're the only one that's not seen it before. What do you think? It doesn't look like Princess Leia. <laughs> it's, got, it's got her end, well it's got one of her end or haircuts that is good day very good i just think it's a brilliant brilliant piece it's just a real random i'd love to um know what the article is that, that accompanies it that's put her pressing her naked bosoms up against his gold solid best bare chest well, calm down <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah brilliant I won't say what those sparks look like coming out of the back of his neck. <laughs> oh, well. Sparks coming out of goldenrod. Yeah. 